we are bringing you a series of a dozen great soft hackle flies. Brent will be demonstrating tips and techniques to tie a wide selection of proven flies. The first fly on the vise today was created a long time ago. It has been fished successfully since the 1700s. Brent has made a few adjustments with some of the materials available today. We are tying on a Mustad 3399 size 10 hook. The tail is red hackle fibers. The body is peacock hurl and a small wire rib. The collar is soft grizzly hackle. Let's go to the bench with Brent. Well, good day everyone and uh, welcome to another segment on the bench. Uh, today I'm going to uh, start a two-part series on soft hackle flies. We're going to do a dozen for you. We'll break it up into six in each uh, part uh, so it doesn't get too long. And uh, I'm going to use some different materials, techniques to show you uh, that just in, kind of inspire you maybe some making some of your own flies or just some old patterns that uh, need to be uh, showcased again. They haven't been around for a long time. And the one I have in the vice right here is an example. The Gray Hackle Peacock, it actually originated back in the 1700s. So there's a lot of history in fly fishing and fly tying. And uh, we're going right from way back when to uh, right up to date with some of the new techniques and materials. So... I grab a chair and uh, make sure you watch this video over if you're interested in tying any of these flies following along. It'd be just perfect. So let's go on with the gray hackle peacock. I'm going to uh, just grab myself a wet fly hook here. And, uh, I'll pinch the barb down on that. I've had one of my neighbors actually said you should be pinched. I know you fish barbless all the time, which I do. I always pinch them down when I tie on, tie my fly on. But he said it might be a good idea to show the people when you're tying the flies. Pinch your barbs down just to kind of promote barbless. And I totally agree with that. So any input at all, any folks will get any any suggestions for us, just feel free to share them. Now for the tail, I'm just going to use some uh, the spade hackle here off of the side of a, a, a cape. Okay, and I get all these nice tailing fibers coming off the side there. Uh, those make good tails. Cut the bottom off. We'll just get a nice little, I don't want that real webby stuff there. I want something nice and bright. Come off the side, nice and straight. I'm just, I'm just going to tie this all in red. It, black hackle, or black would have been better in the regular peacock and so forth but we'll we'll just do a little different variation just to keep it interesting i'll come in here with some red wire for reinforcement on the peacock other thing to remember folks a lot of times with these old patterns like this is there were they never had a lot of materials around like we have today so they'd uh, maybe use something a little different too so don't be afraid to uh, think outside the box a little bit or going to change the colors. It's not nothing's carbon stone here I'm taking some peacock curl here, and this is actually dyed red I'll come to the front I'll tie these down by the tips along the top of the fly <clears throat> I'll just get my peacock curl round forward Make sure you don't crowd the Behind the eye on these flies. Getting a little bit closer actually on that one. I'm sure that's bound down well. And then we'll bring our red wire in reverse. Kind of strengthen that all up, make it stronger. Now the original fly I just showed you on the bench was tied with a hen neck. This is off the Nice webby, soft hackles, which make great uh, uh, colors for the or soft hackles. Okay, and if you don't have them, something like that, just make sure you come off the back of your saddles. Like this is a dry fly saddle or a little bit of a half saddle. That's all they just about done. And you've got these nice little webby feathers at the back. You can use those too. So, and if you don't have um, see where it gets down small enough you want to kind of measure them so they're not too long get quite a taper on them uh, 
I'll show you later on another part of the series here where we're going to uh, tie them forward and then pull them back. But I'll just tie this in regular. The webby. Take about three turns. That's super saddle. It take it micro barb, so it it's got a lot more bob, barbs in it than the other neck, hen neck. And this fly catch fish today just as well as it ever did. And then you just kind of fold that hackle back so it's flowing back nice. Get your whip finish in there. And there you go. Drop a little UV resin on that or head cement, whatever you like. But gray hackle peacock, it's a great fly and that's a good one to start our soft hackles. Let's go to the next one. The partridge in orange is a simplistic but very effective fly. It works all season long, however it can be a great fly during the summer doldrums. We are tying on a size 10 Mustad 3399 wet fly hook. The body is dubbed hair trin in burnt orange and ribbed with gold wire. The collar is gray partridge hackle folded. Here is Brent with this easy to tie fly that will get you into some nice trout. Well good day, the next uh, fly up is going to be the partridge in orange. You'll see I have quite a few ready in my box here, different shades of the orange. Uh, there's some other soft hackles in here, like the hares, ears, and blacks, olives. Got a nice little mix of them right there. Get a box kind of prepared like that, folks. And then when you get to the to the water, you're, you're prepared for a trip. Uh, sometimes, you know, you're in a specific hatch, and that might be the fly you use. And, and uh, you'll go through them quicker than you think. Uh, but it's always better to have a few extras than not enough. You wait to get out fishing, and then you come up short. So... Let's do the partridge in orange. Just gonna wrap, stress the shank. A short little, the 3399 hook here. Just a nice little short drive or a wet fly hook. Now bring in some uh, wire for the rib. You can use whatever color you like. I'm just gonna use some gold, small gold wire. This gives fly a little segmentation like that. Get that out of the way. And this one here, I'll be using some uh, burnt orange hair tron. I like dubbing bodies. I, I like dubbing a lot. It just looks a lot more natural. Get a nice thin dubbing on here. I gotta say that's why I like my rotary vise. I just just for dubbing alone is really really works nice now I leave quite a bit of room on the collar there for the for the business end no just going to reverse wrap this wire and also if you want to just you know when you tie your own bugs you can kind of trick them out a little bit here's some UV hot orange just take a wee little pinch of that Roll that on just kind of by the thorax area. And what I'll do then is I got a little picker here somewhere. There it is. I might just uh, try to get a little bit of that UV out from underneath. And that, that'll pick up underneath that collar. Now all we need to do now is the best hackle out there, bar none, is a partridge skin. They're, they're a little pricey, I'll tell you that, but there is a ton of flies on here of all different sizes. You can go down right to the real small flies down here. And as they get bigger, there's tailing material. There's a, just, that is my favorite material, bar none. We'll get a feather off. We'll just pluck out the fuzzies on the bottom. Tie them in by the tip, fold them back by the tip, and catch them in at a 45 right behind the eye. And uh, you see the tip in there, you can go ahead and clip that off. Kind of like to use these spring pliers on these partridge. There's my tip. The spring pliers I can manipulate, see the 
natural curvature to that hackle. It's kind of a folded hackle. I can see how I manipulated that, that stem around with that style of hackle plier. Works really good. Best way to manipulate the hackle, in my opinion, one of the pliers, get yourself one of those. Really kind of a battery terminal deal or whatever. But boy, what a simplistic little fly that is. I'll put some UV on the front of that or head cement or something. Make that solid. But I'll just another little tip. When you're having some summer doldrums in July or whatever, in the heat of the in the heat of the summer, for some reason orange is the ticket. Just make sure you got a bunch of these ready. You're having a tough day. Don't forget I mentioned that to you. I, don't forget I read that somewhere years ago, and that's true. Uh, these orange flies will uh, produce rainbows in the summer and other fish too. But uh, you want this hackle to be nice and sparse, but it's going to breathe under the pressure when you're retrieving. You can dead drift this in a stream. You can. I, I fish lots in lakes too. It's really, really nice. So uh, partridge and orange, it's uh, definitely a go-to, and I would suggest at least a dozen in your box. And you can vary the color of the orange a little bit if you want. And uh, like I say, I'll just put a little dab of that uh, solar res on there just to make sure that fly don't fall apart. If the fish eat them and chew them all up after a while, that's okay. But I don't want a, a fly falling apart because I forgot to put a little head cement on or something like that. So... There it is. Let's go to the next fly. The hair hackle hair's ear is a very dependable pattern on any water body. The fly can be tied down to small sizes easily. Here's the materials to tie the fly. We are using a Daiichi 1560 nymph hook size 14. The tail and the collar are guard hairs from a hair's mask. The body is dubbed golden tan hair trend and ribbed with excess wire. The thorax is dubbed light yellow UVI stub. Let's go to the bench for this super little nymph pattern. Well, folks, here's a very, very productive nymph. Arguably one of the, the best to be the hair's ear. I'm going to do the soft tackle version of that. With, with, with the, we're going to do the tail and the collar with the hair mask. Hair's mask is a lot of nice, well-marked uh, hair in here, different size. This little fuzzier stuff you use for dubbing and get yourself a hair's mask. They're really nicely marked. I would. Uh, they're not very much money either. They go a long way. So we'll just dress the shank the hook here. I'll get a little snippet of my hair for the tail. Make sure you got the tips kind of lined up. It's on a size 14, so I usually tie a little bigger on my videos because it's so easy to see. That's when I got my camera so far out. We'll try that again. There we go. It's just a little wisp of the tail there because it's not a very big fly. I'll bring in some gold wire. This is small for the rib. Usually when I get this isn't a real small fly. I mean, of course, you get a lot smaller in the 14s, but for a hair, this pattern here, I'd consider it. Well, it's, you can go, I don't think I'd go any smaller than that. Okay, now I'm just going to bring in some hair's ear and antron hair tron for the body. Got the red thread. If this shows through a little bit, that's okay. It's a nice little um, undertone. Come right to the end here. I'll just wrap that forward. You can also use some of that Pertagon flash in there. It makes a really nice rib. I'll just do it with a gold rib. Like, and we'll just follow that up. Get to the call and behind here by the thorax. Cut that just with a scissor blade on the inside so you don't mess that up. And then another nice little material is a, 
I stubbed the light yellow, but the UV is what I'm looking for. And I don't want anything too, too overpowering on this for color. I just a little bit of that UV when it poked. That's really so noticeable under a lot of patterns. So I will use that a lot for under my collars. Get that out of the way. And I should have myself a little picker here. I can get a few of them little fibers out. I'll be okay there. Now I'll go in some extra fine silver wire. Doesn't matter the color here too much. Tie that on behind the eye. Fold it over. Get a half hitch in there and I want to get some more and we need to get some uh, dubbing wax put a little bit on our thread I'm going to go to a hair collar on this soft tackle okay so now get those hair just touching the dubbing. I'm just going to turn that. And you have a nice little dubbing collar. I want to wrap it forward. I'm going to just preen it back as I go. It's crowded the eye just a little bit on this one. it off. Make sure you pull on that wire so it's nice and tight in there. Then I'll just pull it back my my fingers. Make sure I got all my thread behind the eye. You don't want to go through all this effort and then all of a sudden you got your thread covering the eye so you can't get your tippet through there. That's a nice little bug. And uh, so you Call it a soft tackle if you will, but I'll grab that one long hair out of there. But it's a really, really suggestive little bug. There it is. Just a soft tackle. There I got some hair sticking out there because they're just sticking on on the wax. Great way to do a little hair's ear nymph. The size 14 not that hard to tie just you guys can start tying them on 10s 12s and then go down little sizes when you as you feel comfortable with it but uh, get yourself a hair's mask and lots of great bugs that come out of that they have a different colors too okay thanks let's go on to the next one the next fly is simply called the mottled wire nymph brent uses this fly a lot on western trout streams the fly is tied on a tmco 2488 size 14 hook the body is simply modeled wire in your choice of colors. The collar is Swisher's rub a dub dubbing with micro rubber. Well, our next fly is a nice little micro bug. I would like to call this as a wire, just a modeled wire nymph. It fishes very, very well. I've got these in different colors here. Just want to show you just so you got an idea on the what you need to do with these boxes. I, there's some of these that are a lot of beads. Get them down deep in a hurry. This fly here, I'm just going to put a little lead underneath. It does sink, but not as fast, of course. And uh, you don't need everything right down the bottom. This is a fly that works mid-column really, really well. Take some ADOT thread down here. And I'm going to come in with uh, this is a modeled wire, uh, kind of a micro wire. And uh, great product. I'm just going to... Uh, Tie that on the side here. Makes a great body. I just really like this stuff. I'll just get my other work scissors here. Cut that off. And um, if you want, you can put a little lead underneath here just to give it a little bit of a... You can put lead or you can use wire to, or your thread to taper it a little bit. I'll use a little both. 
this is not a really super this fly works really well in in, in riffles and stuff okay then I'll just come forward with the microwire model wire forward make sure those wires turn and it all touches Flies look quite simple and sometimes they get overlooked. But I'll tell you the fish don't, you just use what the fish are eating. That's what I'm tying is flies I can catch fish with and that's my pr first priority. Okay, and I'm going to make sure I use those work scissors again to cut that off. Don't use your good tying scissors. So I've got a bit of a taper going there, looks good. And I need some uh, extra fine silver wire again because I'm going to do another little collar. Make sure that wire is folded over. Throw a half hitch on there. And then the next little secret sauce I got from uh, Doug Schwisher years ago. He made this up. I don't know if he still sells it or not. I bought it from right in Montana. A lot of different colors, but it's a great little material. He said it. I know uh, him and uh, Richard, so they went to, uh, spent a lot of time in New Zealand, and those fish are really, really uh, fussy. And he said that stuff worked really well on them. So, well, it works down there. I want to try a little too. And uh, that one there, I didn't really seem to get too much of the rubber hackle out of it. Little piece in there, and I just fold it as I go back. Going over to it, it's a little bug. Tie it off, and uh, if you're fishing some streams. This is one you want in your box. I'll be using that a lot over here in the foothills this summer. I'm going to go through my boxes and kind of fresh everything up a little bit. I'm always a good time to do that over the winter. There you go. That hair is, it swims really nice. Put that little guy out of there. And that wire helps get it down. It's actually heavier than it looks. But just a really nice, simplistic little bug that'll uh, get the attention of water fish. We've caught a lot of fish with this one. It's been a good fly I've been using quite often. I'll put a little dab of head cement in there. Let it run in there for once. There it goes. So, thanks for watching. We'll catch you again on the next uh, great little soft tackle coming up. The Rainbow Soft Tackle is another creation of Brent's. This fly is a deadly combination of materials and has fooled many trout. Make sure you have at least a dozen ready for your next trip. The hook is a Tiemco 2457 size 12. The tail and body is bleached pheasant tail fibers. The thorax is Cineo's rainbow laser dub. The hackle is Bob White Qual hackle in light shade. Well, folks, today I'm going to bring you up a uh, little fly of mine here. On my travels, I picked up this uh, Bob White quail skin. Now a lot of you Americans understand what that is. You probably see lots of them. That's the first one I've seen, but boy, it's got a great bunch of colored, really unique colored uh, soft tackle fly, uh, materials in there. I'm going to do a variation of a rainbow warrior. This is going to be more of a hybrid, if you will. I'll uh, get to go to hook in the vise. We'll get to tying these rascals up. I forgot to put my bead on it. Of course, here I'm chewing up valuable time. I know you guys are all busy. <laughs> hope not. I hope you're enjoying the day inside and getting some flies ready for the winter. I'm going to put on one of these metallic rainbow beads. Really nice coloration there. Just throw a little eight dot red thread in behind it. Press our shank. Just a lot of times you just see a, 
some materials that, you know, just, and here's another one, bleached um, pheasant, ringneck pheasant. Just going to take a couple of them for my, my tail. Tie them around the corner. There we go. Nice little soft tail there. I'm going to just tie it back out of my way. Grab some uh, silver wire. Just need a little reinforcement on this one. I like to use a lot of wire in my flies. If you've been following me, you know I go through a boatload of it. It's wherever we can make these flies a little more durable. It's Sign me up, that's really key. And I'll just wrap my pheasant forward. My reverse wrap. Oh, there's one, another one wants to come out. A couple. That's all right, actually. I had too many on there anyway. Now we're going to uh, reverse wrap. That was the best thing I ever had. And I lost three or four of them fibers and just thinned that body down where I wanted it. And a little red thread sticking out the back there in the butt. That's okay. Nothing, nothing wrong with that. Little, little straight trigger back there. That's good. And then I'll throw in a half hitch here. And we'll come in with our rainbow fusion dub from Senos. And I want a nice little chopped up piece. I'm gonna just chop that right in half for starters. I had a bag but that was actually meant for colors. I had one whole bag chopped fine. It's okay, we're we're no rush. I'll just get that and I want to envelope that around the, the shank here, but I want to make sure I get the wire on that. Shouldn't have cut that off either, but here we go. Now we'll get a nice collar on this fly, which is really gonna be key. Get some of our sinews out. Really, really bright. This rainbow dub is really cool. I always put more in than I need. It's always easier to take away. Pluck a little of that out. That thins it down pretty quick. This wire, these wire thorax and brushes are... I, know, I just tie so many flies like that. I love them. Fish do too. Wouldn't waste my. I wouldn't do it if it didn't work. Okay, that fly you could fish it just the way it is. But I like to add. Look at these little bob white quails' wings here. They're different sizes right down. I'm gonna go with this one right here. Really cool colors. Get that fuzzies out. Grab it by the tip. Where to go? Oh, it's in my hand still. So small I couldn't see it. Get that right in behind the bead. Make sure we cut those tips out and then I'll grab my little spring-loaded pliers again. I can manipulate that stem. Yeah. Come in behind the Stem of the feather. And this is pretty soft. It's don't worry if it's sticking up quite a ways right now because when it's under pressure in the water, it's gonna lay back just fine. I like my flies to swim. That rainbow underneath there Rick, really looks good, and and the subtle bit of this 
will fly the nice light colored uh, ringneck pheasant. Boy, that's just it's a great little bug. Not super bright. It's kind of got the nice tan tones to it, but it's a little rainbow softy, I call that one. So uh, if you're able to grab the materials for that, take that for a test drive, I think you're going to really be happy with it. And uh, make sure when you're traveling around the country, if you have the opportunity, stop in different shops and you'll be surprised all what you may find. Here's my Bob White. I've got it. Lots of feathers left, but I've used lots of them already. So, all right, we'll get on to the next one. This is a great color combination for most water. The materials selected for this fly have put together another dependable staple for your fly box. Here's the materials to tie the fly. Brent likes this one tied on the heavy 1530 Deichi hook for any species. The tail is red golden pheasant tippets. The dubbing is a special blend of chum fry semi seal and olive seal for chopped and blended with some rusty olive angel hair. The hackle is mottled Indian hen back. Well, here's our next fly, folks. Uh, this is uh, just a soft hackled uh, hen hackle fly here, just a nice little softy for you. Put some red thread on the shank. These are just, you know, use your imagination, it's no end to it. I'm going to use some red pheasant tippets here, golden pheasant tippets for the tail. Giving you just regular red hackle on there if you want. You can buy little bags full of these, they're quite inexpensive. You can buy a whole neck and a tippet and a crest and everything on there. They're quite inexpensive for really what they are. They look like they'd be quite pricey, but they're not. I'll bring in some small gold wire to rib. And then along the side, size 8. This fairly large hook here. This, this is a suggestive fly that'll I like the color combination. And uh, so here on the body, I'm going to be using this uh, custom blend. Uh, I'll have that on the intro, how I blended this. So it's really, really nice dubbing. I use this quite a bit on different flies. Dub it down fairly thin if I want. Use dubbing loops or get a dubbing block. If you don't have a rotary vise, I would suggest you do that. And then I'll just rub that forward. There we go. Get a little extra on there. That's okay. Wire I'm just going to use for a little bit of segmentation. Make sure we get that wound down nice. Really easy. Oh get these flies. I'm going to bring in my little dubbing picker here. I just want to get these fibers out. I want this to have some iridescence to it. It has translucency in the water. It really, that really looks good in the water. Get my tail out again so we can have a look at that. Okay. The collar on this fly is very inexpensive. This is an Indian hen back, modeled, colored, and there is a boatload of great fly or soft tackle materials on here. Just really reasonable. You don't have to spend a lot of money. And, and these soft tackle patterns, I'll tell you, I just want to bring them to you because in many cases there's there's people that fall into different genres and they, they kind of miss, miss out on some of these simple patterns and procedures to build a really really good fly now i need my heckle players i can just grab some regular ones here when i find them there we go a little bigger bigger uh soft tackle it's easier to manage i want to fold this hackle back which i don't you need pliers that got a long stem on it I just fold it back as I go. A couple turns, three turns if you got them. Tie it off the head, cut that stem off. Pull these back with my fingers. I'm just making a little, that's all three fingers at the front here. Get a little 
We're finished there with the whip finish half inch tool here, whip finisher. That's just a super easy little bug to wrap. If you don't want to pick the under body out and you want a little thinner, you can do that too. But there's a lot of these fibers, I'm, they will come out because I know they're quite, quite short. I blended that before, I know the length of them. So they can tidy them up. Coming through in here and pick them out a little bit. There, I'm a little happier with that now. It looks really good. But that uh, slide's got all the, all the makings of a good good bug. It's quite easy. You know, that's you don't have to tie for a long time to tie a lot of really good flies. And one of the best fly tires that ever worked with me is uh, Brad Skidmore out of Coaldale. Um, he said, well, I don't know if you want to have me work for you or not. He said, I've only been tying for a couple of years, but I'll tell you, I got a hell of a tire. I I met him and he called my shop one time, wanted some size 32 dry flies. And I got him some. They're really hard to find hooks that small, but he ended up, I'll, I'll see if I can find him someday. I like to show him, but you, are, you can hardly see him. He tied some divided blue, blue wing olive flies on there. Sent me about a half a dozen of them. I got them in <laughs> here to look at them. It's unbelievable. I never, I never see anything like it. So don't, don't ever uh, shortchange yourself. Brad, be the first guy to tell you. Just stay, stay dialed in, and and don't be intimidated by people who've been doing this a long time or sound like experts. I'll tell you, just have a lot of fun, tie some good bugs, and uh, get out there and enjoy yourself. Okay, that's the end of part one. We're going to go on to part two, and uh, we'll catch you again real soon. We would like to thank Brent for another informative video. We appreciate you visiting us today and hope you can catch part two of Tying Soft Hackles with Brent Schlenker. There is another six flies. We'll also include some great patterns for large game fish. Thanks for watching.